Welcome to the Woodhaven. I'm Daryl and we're back working on the camper. In the last video I ended up installing the smaller RV sink and in this video I'm going to work on a solution to get water into the camper. So stay tuned. I ordered a manual pump and a liquid soap dispenser for the sink but when I ordered it I was banking on using the larger uh, stainless steel sink, not the smaller RV sink. So I'm not sure if this pump is going to work or not. So uh, we'll have to find out. I've turned this pump front ways and sideways and every other way and no matter how I turn it I just can't get it to fit. And uh, the main issue is the ridge along the back. Um, the stainless steel sink didn't have that this one does so it uh, looks like I'm not going to be able to use the manual pump uh, with this sink. This view gives you a better idea of how much room is available or isn't available and so I've got to come up with uh, another solution for running water. I was hoping this would work but uh, it's just too large. After doing some research, I was able to find this on-demand pump and a water filter faucet that combined actually cost less than the manual pump. So I think this is going to be a good solution and this is what I'm going to go with. So here I have uh, both the soap dispenser and the new faucet installed and uh, you can see that this faucet has a much smaller footprint so these are going to work out just fine so uh, now I just need to work on uh, connecting up the uh, water pump to a water source this isn't going to be my permanent gray water solution but I'm just kind of using what I've got right now um, but this should give you an idea of what I've got in mind I'll come up with some kind of a container that will sit underneath the sink uh, to collect any gray water. The pump that I'm going to be using is a 12 volt pump so I'm going to need to tap into my uh, DC wiring uh, so I'm going to have to completely redo all the wiring in the kitchenette area to accommodate that. Um, it was starting to look like a rat's nest anyway so I'm going to reroute all of my wiring and uh, figure out how to hook up the new pump. I wanted to connect everything up to do a, a test run to test for leaks uh, before uh, installing this permanently. So I filled up a bucket with water and uh, set both the water hose and the sink drain into the bucket just for a test run. And uh, everything seems to be working so I think this is going to work. I did have a small link where the uh, supply line connects up to the faucet, uh, but that was an easy fix. I just uh, pushed it further up onto the faucet and uh, tightened the hose clamp a little bit more and that took care of that problem. So after fixing that, I replaced the sink and wanted to run another test. So I just uh, stuffed the uh, water inlet hose through the drain uh, into the bucket and uh, was able to uh, rerun that test. And this time uh, I didn't have any leaks, so I think we're good to go. The way the water pump works is once it's connected to power, the pump self primes and comes up to pressure and then turns off. Um, it actually only turns on when the water pressure drops in the system and uh, that happens when you open the faucet. So that's how uh, this creates an on-demand system. When the faucet's open, it, the water runs. When it's closed, uh, the water turns off. I initially mounted the water pump uh, under the sink in this area here, and uh, what that did was it made it really easy to uh, connect up the wiring and put it in an area you know where I could easily get to it but the uh, the water pump is kind of loud when it runs so I think what I'm gonna do is move it underneath into the storage area below and hopefully that will mask a lot of the the noise and uh, 
get the uh, water inlet hoses out of the way. Okay, again, I had a temporary uh, electrical setup here. I just routed the wires through the uh, power cord access hole, and I uh, just did that temporarily. Uh, what I need to do is fish these uh, wires behind the panels, um, behind the sink area, and then I'll do that at the same time that I move the pump into the storage area. Okay, I got the wiring um, all rerouted and uh, this area is nice and clean now. I don't have the wires dangling behind the stove uh, creating some kind of an electrical hazard. Um, but I still need to move the pump into the storage area and I did build in enough slack uh, on the wires to uh, reach underneath into the storage area so I shouldn't have a problem there. Here I'm taking a look at uh, the water hoses and I'm hoping that I've got enough length that once I put this in the storage area then I'm not going to have to uh, go get some more hose. I think I'll be okay, uh, but uh, I won't know for sure until I get the pump mounted below. Another thing I did was I cut the uh, sink drain. It was almost 12 inches long. I cut that back to just a couple of inches and replaced it with this flexible drain hose. Um, the issue that I ran into is that the sink drain was one and a quarter inches on the outside diameter and the flexible hose was only one inch on the interior diameter. So I needed to heat it up with the, the, uh, the blow dryer uh, to make it soft enough to uh, go over the drain. And uh, that seemed to work out okay. Here you can see the drain hose installed and uh, I ran some water through it just to check for any kind of leaks and uh, everything was watertight as I expected. Okay, I ran into a small problem of moving the pump underneath. If I'm gonna have, be able to open those doors, I can't have the hoses running through that area. So I've gotta come up with a solution so that I can have my hoses coming up from in the storage area and still be able to open my uh, storage doors. Okay, I removed the piano hinges that uh, hold the storage doors on and uh, now I need to snake the uh, wiring down into the storage area. Okay, I've got the pump relocated into the storage area and uh, it looks like I'm going to have plenty of tubing and uh, wiring to uh, connect everything back up. I got a suggestion from a viewer that I should add a switch to uh, the water pump just so that uh, when it's not in use I can turn it off and that'll help uh, use a lot less um, battery power and will help the, the pump from burning out you know sooner. So I thought that was a good idea so I picked up this switch and I'm going to mount it directly to the panels above the storage area. So I'll just uh, clear out a spot to mount that using a Forstner bit. So I've got uh, the ends of where I'm going to mount this uh, drilled out with the Forstner bit. And uh, I'll just use a jigsaw to uh, complete the cutout. My DC wiring is a stranded wire, so I wanted to add these uh, spade terminals just to make the connections a lot cleaner. And I just uh, crimped them and uh, shrunk rack all the uh, contact points. One of the nice things about using an AC switch in a DC circuit is you only have to make a connection through the hot wire because uh, ground isn't needed and there is no neutral. So this was really a, a very easy uh, installation. The pump switch is installed and I've got the uh, face plate on. Um, I think that looks pretty good. And being able to turn the pump on and off uh, when it's not in use, I think that's gonna help out a lot. 
help save my battery and uh, cut down on some of the noise. In order to reroute the water supply hoses, um, I added an access plate to the rear and attached the storage doors to the plate instead of the wall. And what this did was it allowed me to run my uh, supply lines through the plate and uh, also given me the ability to open the access doors without interfering with the hoses. Okay, everything's in place now and uh, the access doors open smoothly. I've got you know the pump connected back up, power, everything's working, don't have any leaks, so I think that's going to work. I have a 10 gallon water tank on order that will fit perfectly into the bottom section of the pantry um, there on the left. So as soon as that gets in, uh, I'll get that installed and uh, we should have a nice working system. All right, my uh, 10 gallon tank uh, arrived and I ended up getting the T1000 model from a, an online company called Class A Customs and uh, you can find them at classacustoms.com and this tank is NSF and FDA approved uh, it's BPA free and it is rated for drinking water I picked up all of the uh, fittings and clamps that I need to hook everything together and I had a viewer warn me about uh, using clear tubing um, for pressurized water um, that there's a good chance that uh, it might blow. So just to be on the safe side, I uh, also picked up some extra braided tubing and I'm going to swap that out uh, just to be on the safe side. If you take a look at these fittings, um, the upper left uh, will be my um, water supply hose and the lower right will be the hose that I connect up to my air vent and that'll keep the water flowing properly. And the open hose on the upper right, that will be how I fill the tank and the lower left that is the drain and uh, right now I'm not going to connect up a drain so I'm just going to cap that off. A lot of you guys are probably familiar with another YouTube channel called Oregon Batman and I watched him install his water tanks into his camper and he added a Bexen deck plate to create an access hole for cleaning out the tank and I liked that idea so I picked one up as well for my tank. Using the Bexen plate as a template I traced out the hole and uh, drilled and cut it out with uh, my jigsaw and uh, it's, it's hard putting a hole into a perfectly good water tank but I do need to uh, clean it out and uh, I think that in the long run I'm going to be glad I did this. Okay, so I wanted to dry fit uh, the access port and uh, it seems to be a pretty good fit. Um, hardly has any play at all. Uh, once I silicone and uh, screw this in, uh, it should be uh, perfectly fine. Okay, I sealed everything up using 100% silicone and attached it using stainless steel pan head screws and after it dried I gave the inside a thorough washing and uh, no leaks from any of the fittings so I think this is ready to install. Before installing the tank though I needed to cut another hole uh, it through the front of my camper uh, so that I could use it as a water inlet and uh, while I've got it exposed here, you can see the two layers of insulation that I've got there. Okay, I've got the water inlet installed and again I used silicone to seal everything up and stainless steel pan head screws uh, to attach it to the camper wall. And uh, don't pay attention to all the uh, grime uh, on the outside of the camper. It needs to have a little bit of a cleaning. Okay, so now I've got uh, the tank in place and I've got the water inlet 
the air vent and the water supply hose is all connected up. Um, I also installed a small bumper in front of the tank to hold it in place uh, against the back wall so that it won't be bouncing around in, in transit. I made the bumper high enough to keep the tank in place but low enough that the tank can be lifted over it in case I ever need to remove it for maintenance or cleaning. I filled the tank up with about five gallons of water uh, just halfway and I uh, just wanted to check for leaks and to test the pump and I did have a tiny leak at the supply hose so a couple of turns on the clamp and uh, that took care of that so I think we're in business. So one, the purpose of this uh, water inlet is it allows me to fill the water tank from outside the camper. And uh, I did test this for leaks as well and uh, didn't find any, so I think uh, we're pretty good. Here you can see that I replaced the tubing on the side of the pump that's under pressure with the uh, braided reinforced tubing. So with everything in place, I wanted to run one final water pressure and leak test and everything seems to be working great. Uh, no leaks anywhere. The uh, on off switch works perfectly. Uh, the water comes through anytime that I open the uh, faucet. So everything looks good. So this is as far as I got in this video. So uh, I want to thank you guys for watching and I'll talk to you later.